Walter Scott may have been only a name in the younger generation of Waterbury and Cheshire, but Walter Scott was an institution to the older people of those places who remember him both as a baker and as a caterer. As an innkeeper, Walter Scott thought first of his guests and then of his house, but at one time his house gave him much concern with expensive litigation and also gave the property owners of Cheshire something to talk and think about. This was in the days of prominence of Samuel P. Thrasher, the heavily mustached head of the law and order league in 1896 and 1897. In those years, the cellars of Walter's hotels was well stocked with very best vintage. But unfortunately for Walter, the town went no license and the wet goods in the cellar were bottled up. One day, however, Mr. Thrasher and his trusty agents descended upon the establishment and seized everything drinkable in sight. To the town hall, they marched the Law and Order League, taking the wines with them. The justice condemned the liquor to be emptied out in the streets of Cheshire. Walter appealed to the District Court of Waterbury, where the issue was tried out before the late Judge Arthur D. Warner of Woodbury then a judge of the Common Police Court of Litchfield County, who was brought here to hear the case. An important array of counsel appeared with Lucian F. Burpee of this city and D. W. Coleman of Cheshire and Cornelius Donahier of Meriden as counsel for Mr. Scott. These attorneys held that Scott had had goods in his possession while license prevailed and that just as soon as the town went no license, he boarded up the cellar and to hold the wines until they could be legally sold. The claim was ridiculed by counsel for the law and order league, but Judge Warner found that the wines should not have been disturbed and ordered them returned to Mr. Scott. The officers instructed to seize the goods at the town hall in Cheshire were John W. McDonald, then city sheriff of Waterbury, and William N. Gillette, then messenger of the district court. The issue became so lively in Cheshire that many residents took sides, some standing by Mr. Scott and others favoring the course of the law and order people. It was claimed that some of the wines were missing, and according to one interested lawyer, the town had to make good to Mr. Scott to the extent of about $700, all of which came out of the town treasury and therefore out of the pockets of the taxpayers. This changed the feeling somewhat for the Law and Order League, 